Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Biochemistry Concepts. This video is about glycogenolysis. It can be defined as breakdown of glycogen to glucose. Coming to significance, after 4 to 5 hours of last meal, blood glucose level decreases. In such conditions, liver will sense the glucose concentration in the blood and it will release glucose into the circulation by glycogenolysis. So, the glycogen stored in the liver is used to maintain the blood glucose level, whereas the muscle glycogen acts as a fuel for muscle contraction. Muscle glycogen cannot be used to maintain the blood glucose level because the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase which converts glucose 6-phosphate to glucose is not present in the muscle. So, that is why glucose 6-phosphate formed by glycogenolysis in the muscle enters into glycolysis to generate ATP. Coming to sites, liver, muscle, these are the major sites of glycogenolysis. Apart from that, it also takes place in kidney, intestine, brain and subcellular site is cytosol. So, all the enzymes concerned with glycogenolysis, they are present in the cytosol. The key enzyme of glycogenolysis is glycogen phosphorylase. So, this enzyme will decide the rate of glycogenolysis. Coming to reactions of glycogenolysis, in the first reaction, glycogen is acted upon by enzyme glycogen phosphorylase. This enzyme removes glucose units in the form of glucose 1-phosphate and this reaction requires phosphate and one more important thing about glycogen phosphorylase is it can remove glucose units leaving the 4 residues from the branch point. That means 4 residues from the branch point they cannot be removed by glycogen phosphorylase. The remaining residues like 5th, 6th, 7th, so on, those residues can be removed by glycogen phosphorylase. After that, one more enzyme comes into action that is transferase. This transferase transfers 3 glucose units to the other chain. So, name itself indicates the function of this enzyme is transferring. So, after that, we have only one glucose residue at the branch point and that is removed by debranching enzyme or glucosidase. So, this debranching enzyme removes that single glucose unit at branch point as free glucose. So, now we have a linear chain of glycogen. So, that linear chain is again acted upon by glycogen phosphorylase. So, when glycogen phosphorylase acts, we know that it removes the glucose units in the form of glucose 1-phosphate. This glucose 1-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate by phosphoglucomutase. Glucose 6-phosphate has different fates in muscle and liver. In muscle, it enters into glycolysis, whereas in liver, it is converted into glucose by glucose 6-phosphatase. As we already discussed, muscle does not contain this glucose 6-phosphatase. That is why muscle glycogenolysis cannot maintain the blood glucose level, but only liver glycogenolysis maintains the blood glucose level because it can convert glucose 6-phosphate to glucose. Coming to regulation of glycogenolysis, epinephrine in liver and muscle glucagon in liver, they activate glycogenolysis. When the concentration of glucose is low in the blood, then liver will sense that concentration and it will release glucose into the circulation. So, here these hormones will activate adenylate cyclase and activated adenylate cyclase converts ATP into cyclic AMP. So, cyclic AMP which is formed here, it activates the protein kinase. And activated protein kinase in turn 
converts inactive phosphorylase kinase to active phosphorylase kinase by phosphorylation. And this activated phosphorylase kinase again it in turn converts glycogen phosphorylase which is inactive in dephosphorylated form to glycogen phosphorylase active form that is phosphorylated form. So, once glycogen phosphorylase is phosphorylated that means it is activated it can convert glycogen it can act on glycogen and releases the glucose units in the form of glucose 1 phosphate. So, the overall effect of epinephrine and glucagon is they will activate the glycogen phosphorylase which in turn increases the degradation of glycogen to glucose.